Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we made mention about the importance that mathematics is going to have on the study of electromagnetics right, in our course. And we also said that we're going to just tackle the mathematics on their own for the first quarter, 25% of this course. So here's where we begin to do that. And it turns out that the study of electromagnet electromagnetics is essentially the study of fields. So let's begin to figure out what a field is. Now, to do that, we have to understand the difference between a scalar and a vector. So that's where we're going to start. So a scalar and a vector. Okay, so a scalar, and you, you, you should have heard these terms in physics before, so let me remind you that a scalar has only magnitude. Only magnitude, while a vector has magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. Okay, so let me give you some quick examples. A scalar, right? Uh, the classic, you know, example in physics of a scalar is time, mass, temperature. A scalar can be negative, right? Temperature can be negative, certainly. Maybe not in Kelvin, but uh, in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, you know, mass happens to be non-zero uh, or non-negative, and time happens to be non-negative. But scalars in general can be positive, negative, or zero. Uh, they do not have direction. So, uh, you know, you can tell me, you know, two seconds, but it, it doesn't make sense to say two seconds um, this way or, you know, north or something like that. Or, or um, you know, mass is kilograms or it does not have a direction. A vector on the other hand does have a direction so um, the classic example from physics would be a force right I have uh, so many Newtons in the you know the positive X direction or the north direction or something like that displacement is also a vector. Um, I've walked three uh, three meters north, or three blocks north, or something like that. Displacement. Acceleration is another example. Right. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared down, you know, towards, towards the center of the Earth. So, uh, you know, there are others, of course. These are just three examples of each. Now, in our course, we're going to reserve special notation to distinguish between vectors and scalars. So let's start with a vector. A vector in print is going to be bolded. So like, I'm just going to use the capital letter A, for example. So if, if A was a vector, it would be bolded in print. What do I mean by in print? Well, uh, things like your homework assignments from me, um, the exams, you take in this course the textbook these are all printed they're, they're all in text so you will see them as bolded now for me you know just writing this bold letter here is a pain in the butt and so I'm not going to do that when I write notes in these videos or the notes in my PDFs will not be bolded instead the, I'll put an arrow over it like that so these things are the same thing right those both mean um, vector A. All right? Now, for the scalar, we just write something like this. We just write plain old uh, letter, like A or U or V or whatever. So that, that's how you can distinguish between a vector and a scalar. And you must always keep this straight. We're going to use the same notation throughout the entire course. So that's one nice, consistent notation we're going to use and you must be able to keep this straight you must also always ask yourself okay does this thing have direction or um, 
do do I have to give a direction in my answer? And the way you answer that question is by considering, you know, what what is the notation that I or the book or the exam is looking for. All right. So I think we understand hopefully now the difference between a scalar and a vector. Now let's talk about fields. A field is a function, you know, think about mathematics, uh, that specifies a quantity everywhere in a region. Okay? So it's a function that specifies, a function, a function. So think about like f of x f of x is a function that specifies something, you know, maybe you say y equals f of x. So this specifies y on x. So you tell me what, you know, this is like a one dimension. Here's x. You tell me, you tell me uh, where you're at, right? That's the region. You tell me where you're at along x, and then I'll specify this quantity for you. Maybe y means temperature, or maybe y means mass, or something like that. Okay, so again, a field is a function that specifies a quantity everywhere in a region. Well, what if you had, um, you know, we're not going to just talk about one dimension. We're going to talk about two dimensions in space, right? Oh, I can move up, I can move down. So maybe I would give you the coordinates of where I'm at, and then that specifies, I don't want to use Y here, but maybe that specifies uh, something like uh, like A. You know, I used A up here, so maybe that specifies, maybe A means temperature. So I travel, you know, I travel uh, along the, um, you know, east-west, and I travel along north-south, and then you, I, I'll tell you the temperature. Or, or we're not even going to limit ourselves to two dimensions. We're going to talk about three dimensions in our course. So maybe I can move east-west, which would be x, north-south, which would be y, and maybe up and down, which would be z, and then maybe I tell you what the temperature is. Right. So, so again, a field is a function that specifies a quantity everywhere in a region. So that's this. This here's the region specified by x, y, z, and then we are specifying a quantity a. Now, this quantity a can be a scalar, and if it's a scalar, we call that a scalar field. Okay if that quantity is a scalar. But that quantity can also be a vector. And if that quantity is a vector, we would call that, yep, a vector field. So electricity and magnetism, it turns out, is essentially just the, uh, the study of fields, particular fields. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about um, how we can apply this uh, to gravity and fluids because gravity and fluids, well, they're, they're vector fields as well. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be usually concentrated with uh, about uh, vector fields, okay, but some scalar fields. But gravity and fluid motion is a, is a vector field. And so we can take our mathematics that we study in this course and we can apply them to those things as well. But let me give you some examples here. So let's, let's talk about the weather. You know, the weather is a nice nice uh, two-dimensional problem where uh, you know we have we have east-west along the x-direction and we have north-south um, uh, along the y-direction so maybe maybe I take some data right at some weather towers and and you know maybe maybe I know that uh, in this region is like 80 degrees and um, you know maybe over here is like 81 degrees right and maybe maybe there's like a mountain top here and so around here is 78 degrees and around here is like 80 80 degrees okay so uh, th in this example because we're specifying temperature and temperature is a scalar uh, we would say that this is a scalar field that we're describing now notice um, I can go, you know, somewhere along the x direction and somewhere along the y direction, maybe here, maybe this is point x0, y0, right? And then I can read out a temperature, in this case 81 degrees. So that's that function. There's some sort of mathematical function that is modeling the temperature in this region. And so we would say f is equal to, or not f is equal to, but maybe, the, maybe we use capital T for temperature is equal to f of x, y. So you tell me x, y, 
in this case x0, y0, and then I'll tell you the temperature. That's a scalar field. Okay, now in keeping with the weather, another typical field that you'll see in the news, the weather uh, segment, is the um, wind velocity. So maybe in the same region, so we've got x, y, uh, so x is uh, east-west and y is north-south, we, we say the wind velocity. So maybe, you know, at this point, maybe the uh, we, we draw an arrow and we have uh, 10 miles per hour. And then maybe at this point we draw an arrow and maybe we make that arrow a little bit longer because uh, its velocity is like, it should be miles, miles per hour, is, is larger. It's 11 miles per hour in some direction. And so, you know, I'm not going to label all these arrows for brevity, but you could, you could specify the wind in this region like this. And certainly you can only draw a finite number of arrows, but really every single continuous point in this region would have some sort of uh, wind velocity. Okay, now here you're specifying a vector, so we would call the wind velocity to be a vector field. So uh, why is that? Well, and I'll use I'll use u as velocity. So I can come maybe 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 this is point x zero y zero. So I can come along x and y and to this point, and so I want to know what the wind velocity is. Well, you have to give me ten miles per hour, and you have to give me the the direction of the velocity, right? Um, and so that's why this is a vector field. So we would just write something like this. So this would be our vector field. You notice the arrow over it because this is not in print, right? This is me writing, so I'm going to put the arrow over it. Gravity is the same way. And I'm going to, throughout this course, relate our s subject to gravity quite a bit. Um, and, and I just want to elaborate on that gravity analogy right now before the end of this video. Gravity is a fundamental force in nature, as is the electromagnetic force. That's why um, we'll, we'll usually be talking about gravity and electromagnetics uh, side by side. Gravity we know a lot about because of Einstein and Newton, and but we, we, we still cannot say what it is actually what what draws the apple to the earth like what what is it exactly we we can't break it down uh on that fine level and that's because gravity is what we say is a fundamental force it cannot be broken down anymore you can talk about the properties you can say oh yeah you know it points in this direction or it has this magnitude uh, it makes some waves right there are gravitational waves uh, we can distort gravity you know it can be distorted in some way okay but um, you you cannot actually say like what it is and it, because it's fundamental right and so in in the same way in the same way, in electromagnetics, um, electromagnetic force is a fundamental force. And so you, we really can't say like w what it is exactly. We can say its properties, how it propagates, um, you know, the forces act along such a direction or with such a magnitude, right? Um, and um, we, can, we can talk about the waves of, gravi of electromagnetics, all right? But we, we're, in our course, we're not gonna try to attempt to say like, what it is exactly? What what is electromagnetics like? What is that force? Um, we're we're just going to describe the mathematics. Okay, so you're you're getting a, a, a kind of a glimpse of that here. So in the next video, we're just going to continue on and talk about uh, vectors now. How we're going to handle vectors because uh, scalars, of course, you're used to numbers from algebra and so forth. But now we're going to we're going to talk about vectors. Uh, so stay tuned.